All right, math fans, we're going to do section 2.3 here in pre-calc 20. Uh, we're going to look at the sign law today. Now, if you've taken foundations 20, sign law is a bit of a re uh, review from chapter 3 in that uh, course. But for those of you that haven't, um, we're going to look at it real quick today. Uh, we'll go over a couple of examples. We'll do some word problems, and then I'll turn you guys loose with some work to do. Um, now, sine law works well for any triangle that's a non-90 degree triangle. If it's a 90 degree triangle, you can still use SOHCAHTOA, okay? So that's sine, it's opposite over hypotenuse, cosine adjacent over hypotenuse, tangent opposite over adjacent, which we talked about in 2.2 uh, when we were working with any uh, trig values, right? Um, so if we were to work with this triangle here, this blue one, for example, uh, with triangles, uh, they always label the angles uh, in uppercase letters, and then they label the opposite side with the lowercase. So for this guy here, I'm just going to label my sides. C, A, and B. Okay, so I'm going to use that. I'm quickly going to show how they came up with sine law here. Um, what we did is if we look at angle C here, what I'm going to do is um, you can see this dotted line that I've drawn through the triangle ABC here. I'm going to label that dotted line H, and that is a 90 degree perpendicular bisector, okay? It cuts this angle B in half, and then... Um, what I'll do is I'll show you where we came up with that. So if I look at C here, angle C, I can see that if I was to take the sine of C, I know sine of C is uh, opposite over hypotenuse, so that would be H over A. And now I'm going to look at the opposite side here, and I'm going to look at A, and I'm going to take the sine of A. I know that sine of A is once again um, opposite over hypotenuse. My opposite here is again H over C. Now if I take both of these formulas and I get H alone in each one, so I'm going to multiply the green one here by C, so it would be C times sine of A, that equals H. And then if I look at the red one here, I multiply both sides by A, I'm going to get a sine C equals H. So here I have two formulas now that equal H, right? This guy and this guy both equal H, so technically they're the same thing. So I could rewrite this as colors work. A sine C equals C sine A. Let me just clean that up a little bit here. Like so. So if I wanted to, I could actually rewrite this. I can bring the lowercase c over to one side and the lowercase a over to the other side through division. So I can get c sine c divided by c equals c sine a over A. All right, and then if I wanted to, what you could do is you could draw another dotted line like this, and you could do the same proof, but for angle B and angle A, so you would prove that sine A over A equals sine B over B. And that's how we get with the sine law. We can say that sine A over A equals sine B over B equals sine C over C. So you can work with any two of these. You don't need necessarily A, B, and C. You can work with A and B, A and C, C and B, C and A. It doesn't matter. You just need two of these. All right. And for the sine law to work, you need any two angles and one opposite side, or you need an angle, an opposite side, and then another side looking for the opposite angle to that side. All right. 
So let's look at an example here. Um, here I want to determine the length of QR or little p, as we like to use sometimes with the lower and the uppercase letters. So I want to solve for this side length here. Well, if I look, I've been given two angles and a side. Now this will work, I just need to find the angle here for Q, I just need big Q. I know that Q is just going to be uh, 180 minus 75 minus 39 because all angles of a triangle add up to 180. So if I work that out real quick, so I'll just take on my calculator and I'm going to go 180 minus 75 minus 39, it's 66. So there we go. Now I have an angle and its opposite side. I can now use sine law to find P. So I'll set that up. It's going to be sine 66 over 8.1. And that's going to be equal to sine 75 all over little p. So now what I recommend is I'll show a few more steps with this guy just so we can get it all worked out. Um, and then after a while, I'll speed up my examples. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cross multiply everything here. I'm going to solve for R. So it's going to give me R sine 66 equals 8.1 times sine 75. And now to get R by itself, I divide both sides by sine 66. So that's going to eliminate it both here. So then I'm just left with R equals 8.1 times sine 75 all over sine 66 now. So get your calculator out. Try this one. Make sure you can do all the steps. Uh, most people, they find that it's not so much doing, like setting the equation up, it's punching it into the calculator because if you do it, the wrong set of steps, um, you're going to get it wrong, even though you did all the algebra here to get it right. So 75 sine times 8 1 equals that divided by I get 8.5. eight point six centimeters. Okay, so you just gotta be careful uh, with what calculator you're using and that's how you should get the work. If you can't get the answer, uh, just make sure you ask to make sure you, um, I can show you maybe you're doing a step wrong. Because usually it's this part tends to be you know the most work and then punching your calculator should be the easy part and that's where people tend to make the most mistakes is on the easy part. All right, now for this one here, we want to find angle G, uh, this guy here, but um, we don't, but to do that, we need to actually find the side first because you need the opposite side to G. I'm just going to change that to a lowercase g. So to do that, we have to step back and work with what we have here first. All right, now if you look, um, I've been given angle H and side H, um, and I've been given side J, but I don't have angle J. And actually, if I find little j, I have two angles of my triangle, I can then solve for uppercase G without having to solve for little g. So for this one here, I'm going to solve for an angle first. So I'll set up my equation. Sine J is what I'm looking for. Um, all over 6.1 equals sine 65 all over 8.6. See, 
if I can make that look a little bit better. Like so. Well, so much for that. Either way. So now I'm going to do my work. Now this time I'm not going to do all the cross multiplication and solving. All I'm going to do is because I need j, j by itself. Is I'm going to bring the 6.1 over by multiplying it to both sides. And what that does is it cancels these two out, and it leaves me with sine j equals 6.1 times sine 65 all over 8.6. So now I'm going to solve all this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go sine 65 times 6.1, and then I'm going to divide it by 86, or 8.6, sorry. So I'll do that step first so you can see the numbers that I'm getting. So that gives me sine j equals 0 0.6428. Now I went to four decimal places. When you're solving for an angle, always go to two decimal, or four decimal places, sorry. Now all I need to do is find j, so I just go j equals sine negative 1 of 0.6428. So I punch that into my calculator, and you guys should get j equals 40 degrees. So now all I need to do is solve for angle g. I have both j and h. If I add them up, that's 104. Five, so that means angle G is going to equal 75 degrees. And I just did that by going 180 minus 40 minus 65. And there's my answer for G. Okay. Now, for example three, I'll set this up, but I want you guys to try this one on your own. See if you can draw it out. So you've been given triangle PQR. So your drawing never has to be anything specific. Like, you're not drawing these to scale. I always just draw a classic triangle like that. I'm going to go ahead and label stuff. So I know that this is 45, or sorry, 55. Um, I know that PQ is 8, and I know that QR is 12. All right, so go through and try to solve that one. Uh, pause the video, take a look at it. All right, so if you've tried it, I'll just put in my answers here. For angle Q, I got 92 degrees. For angle R... It should be 33 degrees. And then for side Q, 14.6. Okay. All right, moving on to the next one. All right, here's a bit of a word problem. Um, now some of these word problems in the textbook can be a little wordy. Um, it, these ones tend, I find, in pre-calc 20, have, have better diagrams and better explanations. Um, then the ones in Foundations 20, Foundations 20, I found the word problems were trickier. So that's a bit of a bonus. This is one of the few times that something, if there is any crossover between the courses, that pre-calculus is actually a little bit easier. Okay, so uh, Brenda and Diana plan to climb a cliff at Dry, Dry Island Buffalo Jump, Alberta. They need to know the height of the cliff before they start. So here they are, they're down here somewhere, maybe a point B. And they want to get to point A, so they want to know the height here of the cliff. Uh, they determine... Yeah, Brenda starts at point B here, okay? Uh, she finds that the angle A, B, C, um, the angle of elevation to the top of the cliff. Then, um, Brendan estimates that angle C, B, D, the angle between the base and himself, okay? CBD right here. So that's 60 degrees. His angle of elevation is 76 degrees. Um, and Diana, who's at point D, 
she estimates that angle C D D is 50 degrees, and that's the angle between the base of the cliff and herself. Okay, and Brendan. So now what they want to do is they want to determine the height of the cliff to the nearest meter. So what you're actually trying to solve here is this point, this height right here. So that would be little b. Okay. Now to get there, um, you got to do a little bit of work. You actually need to solve some things off of this triangle first. Okay. So here you've been given two angles and a side. So that means with the two angles, you can find the third angle. You can find angle C right here. And then once you have that, you have an angle and its opposite side with the 60 meters. So then you can use that to find other parts of the triangle. And what I want to find is this length here because it connects both triangles. Finding this part over here is a little silly and redundant, so I'm not going to bother with that at all. Who cares? So once I have these two angles, once I have this side, I can then work with the angle that I have here in this side and solve for little b over here. So to do that, I'm going to set this up and I'm going to find, I guess that would be um, angle C first. So I know that angle C equals um, 180 minus 50 minus 60. So that is going to be 70 degrees. So now that I have that, I can use sine law. I'm going to go sine 70 all over 60 equals, and I'm working to find this angle over here, so, or that side, so I'm going to use this angle here, sine 50 over, uh, that'll be, little, oh, backwards, little d. Okay. So I'm going to skip a few steps here and just show you how this would look once you move everything around. So I'm going to bring the D over and the 60 over and then divide by sine 70. So it becomes 60 times sine 50 all over sine 70. So now take time, punch that into your calculator. I get 49 meters. All right, so now I have that length um, of little a, I guess, or little d, little a, because they're interchangeable. Now, I know this length here is 49. So now, if you look here for the next triangle, I'm trying to find this length here. I'm dealing with a 90 degree triangle, so I don't even need to use sine law, actually. I can use uh, Sokotoa. And if you look, I've been given the adjacent side to my angle, and I'm looking for the opposite. So we know that that would be tangent. So I'm going to use tan 76 equals opposite over adjacent. And if I quickly just punch that in, so it's going to be 49 times tan 76. That equals 196.5 meters. Okay, and there it is. That's how you do sine law, guys. Okay, and here's the assignment for today. Um, after this, we'll be doing cosine law.